morning and welcome to St. John's Episcopal Church in Johnson City, Tennessee on this beautiful, joyful Easter morning. We are glad to be together. Wherever you are joining us from, welcome and happy Easter. I invite you now, as you gather yourselves for celebration and prayer, to listen to the pealing of the bell. Thank you. 
Christ yesterday and today. The beginning and the end. Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. This is the day when our Lord Jesus Christ passed from death to life. May the light of Christ rising in glory banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. <laughs> who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin to your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
A reading from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wine, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all people, the sheet that is spread over all nations, he will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and the other Gentiles. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. 
You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and the Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so they might go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place where they laid him. But go, tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the living one. 
our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Well, as you may imagine, I usually get up quite early on a Sunday morning. And especially on Easter morning, which is a great getting up morning. And what I heard on this Easter morning, while it was still dark and just on the brink of day, was the thudding sound of running feet. And when that sound faded into the distance, nothing else for a very long time. It was a strange sound on this Easter morning. And it is a strangely silent way for the Easter gospel to end. On this day when we are bursting with alleluias and jubilation in celebration of the resurrection. The women had gotten up early too to anoint the body of their dead friend and teacher. But when they got to the tomb, it was empty. And the angel told them, he is not here. See, that's the place where his dead body was. He is risen and gone ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. He is alive and at large in the world. He is risen, but the women are not shouting Alleluia. They fled from the tomb in terror and amazement and said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Any translation you read they were terrified. And the women came out and ran away because they were frightened out of their wits. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They got out as fast as they could, their heads swimming, stunned, and said nothing to anyone. And once they got outside, they ran away because great fear and excitement got the better of them. They didn't breathe a word of it to anyone. Talk about terrified. And this note of fear and terror is not only the last line of this morning's Easter gospel, but it is the last line of Mark's whole gospel not your typical happy ending. But I find myself grateful for, to these women for the sound of their thudding feet, for their running, for their terrified astonishment and their frightened silence. Because they remind me that Easter always begins with a sense of overwhelming awe for what God has done and for the unimaginable victory and kind of life that is shown to us. They had come to anoint the body of their dead friend and teacher and nothing could have prepared them for what they encountered. They looked into the heart of it, into the empty tomb, and they heard this news. He is risen. He is alive and at large in the world. And he has gone ahead of you to Galilee, where you live and move. And though these women cannot grasp or comprehend 
this news that they have just heard, the resurrection will grasp and seize them. Jesus is alive. This is our Easter proclamation, alive and at large in the world. And we will meet him somewhere as we go. When I, John and I were 20 somethings living in Atlanta, the first church we attended was a Unitarian church in our neighborhood called the First Existentialist Church of Atlanta. I'm not sure now what the name meant, but we liked the folks and it was a good place for us at the time. And it started us at least in the habit of going to church. And one morning a woman got up from the congregation to sing a special solo. She sang, ain't no grave can hold my body down. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. I'd never heard this gospel song before. It was early one morning, just about the break of day. Angels came from glory to roll that stone away. When the women came along and found their savior gone, ain't no grave can hold my body down. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. At that first trumpet sound, I'm gonna get up out of the ground. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. Oh, yonder Gabriel standing on the land and sea, don't blow your trumpet until you hear from me. Night is almost gone and the day is coming on. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. Meet me, meet me, Jesus. Meet me in the middle of the air. And if these wings don't fail me, I'll meet you anywhere. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. Ain't no grave can hold my body down. And the young woman who got up and sang it had just suffered a terrible setback and a terrible injury in her life. And she sang this song with full heart and voice, but she also sang it with her whole guts. I saw her gather and call in her whole self. It's a beautiful and audacious song, but what made it memorable on that morning is that it seemed that the song came true as she sang it. As she sang, she rose from the grip of some grave that couldn't hold her down. I saw her stand up in her grave, seized by the power of the resurrection. And though we cannot grasp or comprehend what happened there in that tomb in the night, as Easter day was breaking, the resurrection will seize us. He is alive and at large in the world and there you will meet him. For several years, I served as a volunteer with a group committed to supporting children whose mothers are in prison. And the mission of the group was based on the simple truth that children need mother love as much as they need food or shelter. They need parent love. And I was privileged as a volunteer to accompany many of these children on their visits to the prisons to see their mothers. We had to get up early while it was still dark and board buses that took us north or south 
for a couple of hours to the two prisons that we visited. The sun rose as we traveled. The prison walls are festooned with razor wire and we stood outside at the gates waiting to be let in. And when we finally were, we were led into a little ante room and waited again while the mothers were rounded up from their cell blocks and gathered and brought to another room. Not all mothers got to visit with their children. It was a privilege they had to earn. And when the mothers were all gathered in that separate room, the children were called one by one, children of all ages, six and 12 and three, and sometimes even an infant. They went through a metal detector. Then they are frisked and they walk down a short hallway and the mothers are standing or kneeling at the threshold of that other room. And they greet them with great open and extended arms. A prison eats years of life and is filled and haunted with thousands and thousands of years of eaten and unlived life. But what happens on these visitation days when the children walk over that threshold and the mothers are reunited with their children and the children with their mothers, what happens is like food and drink to starving people. What happens is bodies thrilling to be in the presence of each other and bodies coming alive. What happens is an intensity and kind of joy that perhaps only those who have been raised from the dead know. Ain't no grave can hold these bodies down. Ain't no grave can hold these bodies down. I've seen it for an afternoon where death had no dominion. Many generations ago, a Jewish graveyard was destroyed, vandalized, the gravestones smashed, and the pieces scattered helter-skelter, hundreds upon hundreds of fragments. A Jewish man passed by this graveyard often and stopped and saw the desecration and ruin. And he decided at some point to take upon himself the job of gathering up these fragments and putting them back together piece by piece. He wrote later that one time when he had stopped by that graveyard, he had felt and heard from that place, from the smashed and scattered fragments, a great yearning and a great longing. A great longing filled them all, he said. First name in search of family name, date of death seeking dead man's birthplace, son's name wishes to locate name of father, date of birth seeks reunion with the soul that wishes to rest and peace. And until they have found one another, they will not find perfect peace. In loving kindness, this man gathered up the fragments he cleansed them of blemishes, photographed each one, arranged them on the floor of a great hall, and made each gravestone whole again, one again, fragment to fragment, like the resurrection of the dead. 
a great yearning, a great longing filled them all. And until they find one another, they will not find perfect rest. This year we have been scattered, helter, skelter. And a great longing has filled us all. You in search of me and me in search of you, brother in search of sister, grandmother in search of child, the elderly in search of any company at all. And until we are, can find each other, we will not find perfect joy. Fragment to fragment, like the resurrection of the dead. Ain't no grave can hold this body down. Ain't no grave can hold this body down. And the women's thudding feet and silent astonishment tell us that this resurrection is not just a return to life as it once was, but a different kind of life in which death in every form has no power to hold any body down. The living one is at large in the world and there we will meet him seized by the resurrection and seized by the life that is in him and that he shares with us. It is I, he says, do not be afraid, but go tell your brothers and sisters, I am alive and at large in the world. Amen. Together now, we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. At this, the heavenly choirs of angels rejoice, the earth exalts, and Mother Church is glad. Therefore, I ask you, who praise the loving kindness of Almighty God, 
to join in prayer for all of God's people and for all people everywhere according to their needs. Jesus, light of the world, bring the light and peace of your gospel to the nation. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, bread of life, give food to the hungry and nourish us all with your word. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, our way, our truth, our life. Be with us and all who follow you in the way. Deepen our appreciation of your truth and fill us with your life. Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us. Jesus, good shepherd who gave your life for the sheep, recover the straggler, bind up the injured, strengthen the sick, and lead the healthy and strong to new pastures. We remember those on our parish prayer list. Kitty, Amanda, Sue, Veronica, Alice, Linda, Steve, John, Ray, David, Gary, Tim, Mary Catherine, Evelyn, Ed and Charlene, Carolyn, Becky, Peg, Jennifer, Bob, Abilie, Bill, Karen, Edith, Judy, Michael and Ted, Chance, Sue. You're invited to add other names either aloud or by using the chat function on Zoom. For Gregory, Dylan, and the Milner family. For Jack. Victoria. Ed and Paul. We pray also for those who celebrate birthdays this week. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Strengthen them when they stand. Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up as they fall. And in their hearts, may the peace which passes all understanding abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus, Lord of life. In your mercy, hear us. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. Raise us with them to eternal life. We remember especially Louis Shelton. You're invited to add other names either aloud or using the chat function. For Marcia, promising news for Dylan. Rosemary, Jesus, Lord of life, in your mercy, hear us, accept our prayers, and be with us always. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have promised through your Son, Jesus Christ, but when we meet in his name and pray according to his mind, he will be among us and hear our prayer. 
And your love and mercy fulfill our desires and give us your greatest gift, which is to know you, the only true God, and your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Happy Easter. Hallelujah. Our service now continues with celebration of Holy Communion. And I invite you during the singing of the hymn to set your tables at home. Now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. the power, the glory, the splendor, and the majesty, for everything in heaven and on earth is yours. All things come from you and of your own do we give you. Blessed are you, Lord God of creation. In your loving care you spread before us the table of life, and give us the cup of salvation to drink. 
Keep us always in the fold of our Savior and our Shepherd, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Blessed be God forever. Almighty Father, whose dear Son on the night before he suffered instituted the sacrament of his body and blood, mercifully grant that we may receive it thankfully in remembrance of Jesus Christ our Lord, who in these holy mysteries gives us a pledge of eternal life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, alleluia. These are the gifts of God for all the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Alleluia, alleluia. Let's pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another and have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. 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 That was a joyful noise. <laughs> of Easter to all of you, and there is coffee hour after this service. Um, some of us, uh, Mark and Nick and I, are headed over to the park for the second uh, celebration.